everyone. Good evening and welcome. This is Ramola D from Ramola D Reports, and I'm here today with a very special guest. This is Christopher Bertolino. And, um, you know, he has a background from Santa Ana, California, and uh, he has a story to tell that I think um, is somewhat similar to the stories that some other people have relayed and um, told us about on my show quite often. As many people may know, one of the things that I'm doing is collecting witness testimonials from people who are reporting unlawful targeting and persecution and abuse in private by many of these agencies that have gone off the rails and are engaging in unethical activities. So Chris has told me a little bit of his story and you know many people are reporting the use of energy weapons and neurotechnology on them and uh, one of my missions in life is to collect as many stories as I can to present to the world because indeed I know that this is happening and uh, you know many of the scientists and whistleblowers have spoken to have given witness to the fact that this is indeed happening so we as a society need to wake up hear the stories hear these accounts recognize how horrendous these programs are and do our best to stop them and make them stop and hopefully this conversation will help awaken the consciences of those people inside the agencies who are engaging in these crimes against people because they involve life takedown. Christopher Bertolino is somebody who's got an interest in art, as everyone can see from the beautiful pictures behind him. And he's also somebody, he, he tells me, who's interested in philosophy, theology, archaeology, anthrop anthropology, and history. I guess a lot to research. So, um, Chris, I'm very glad to make your acquaintance. Welcome to the show, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing your story. Well, thank you. Um... Thank you for having me. I uh, don't know, it's a lifelong thing. I, I mean, it started with my mother, I guess, making some narratives against my father. And narrative, she was right over my life. Um, she's an RN. She killed people mental health now but like she did surgeries on children when she started her career and uh, well, one of those surgeries was like me getting implanted by the United States Army Signal Corps my grandfather on her side of the family well you know, mention all the names or whatever, but he was Army Signal Corps and hella racist, like, didn't like me very much for being the person I am. And um, my mother is, like, just part of a really, like, extremely, like, white racist family like that. And, um, and so she chose, she chose to like, you know, give me up to be destroyed. And, um, I don't know, I, you want to give me some direction where I should go? Like, I mean, I'm like an implant person. I don't want to just be like rambling on, but, um, can I ask you a few questions? Because it sounds to me like what you're talking about right now is experiences as a child. So you say your mother worked as a psychiatric nurse or behavioral mental health nurse, and she, there's a connection with the U.S. Army Signal Corps you mentioned. You say that you were implanted by them. How exactly did that happen? Did she work for the Army? Well, her father was in the Army, and I mean, I think that's the problem with a lot of targeted individuals. They've been, you know, implanted with something from some government agency, if not the mm -hmm. military. I don't know what, but um, yes, many people indeed report being implanted, but a lot of them report being implanted at a later age. You know, through a doctor visit or being in the hospital for some reason or the other, uh, some kind of sit situation like that that uh, leaves them with these non-consensual implants. And when you say implants, Chris, what exactly do you mean? Do you mean BCI implants, brain-computer interface implants? 
Yes, those are the kind exactly that um, have been wired into me. They're um, mm -hmm. brain computer interface implants, as you just um, stated. And they um, engage with uh, like the brain, any other organ, or any part of the nervous system of electrical stimulation. They're um, called mm -hmm. like deep brain stimulation, but it's mm -hmm. used to like, control my brain and hurt my brain and record everything that my brain does, and then like you know. And kind of just play that information back into my head anytime that I want. And by doing that, like mind control. So you're okay. Thank you for sharing that information. It sounds like what you're saying is you are experiencing the accessing of your brain and your neural system through energy technologies of different kinds, including deep brain stimulation technologies, which is neurotech. And um, sorry, yeah, it's like neuromodulation technology. Yeah, neuromodulation technology, and I know there's various kinds. They, these days, they've got electro-optical imaging, they've got ultrasonics, you know, they've got a whole bunch of different kinds of tech, nanotech, etc. Um, you know, millimeter wave tech and whatnot. So, um, but you're saying that they are able to send signals to your brain, and they're able yeah. to also harvest some of your thoughts. And what exactly are you saying? What what are they able to harvest from your brain, and what are they playing back to you? It's a transmission like this phone call. I I, I guess it's like a low frequency that the military uses, but it's just like connected to the battery pulse generator like receiver and um, from a remote location these devices inside my body are monitored and controlled and operated and it's, it's just all something happening over the communications grid like this call is happening. I see. So there is a receiver. You're talking about having sort of a transponder or receiver inside your brain, an antenna system kind of thing, which receives signals from the air transmissions. And oh, you're. Wire. And wire electrodes that have been placed in my brain and on my nervous system and other places, and just like in my back, torso, organs on the inside. I see. So are you suggesting there's something like a body area network with some kind of devices implanted at specific points? Network neuromodulation cellular implant systems. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, these days they've got this nanotechnology that um, also is apparently being deployed and reading about it. Um, you know, they're able to set up. Sorry? Oh, a lot of people are like lab animals in a lot of ways, and not always the same thing. I mean, anytime, I guess, anyone that powerful in the government healthcare system decides that they want to do something, you know, like kind of thing to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is many, many roots, it seems, to this very dark world of non-consensual experimentation, and there are many agencies that are involved, both the military and the health and human services agencies. It's absolutely disgraceful, and there are so many people coming forward to describe their experience as much as you are. Uh, but, you know, every story, it's important to um, publicize and expose so that um, everybody understands what's going on, so that this can be brought to an end. Um, can you describe in what ways, um, you know, this affects your life? Well, it's like being physically disabled, um, mentally impaired, sort of like 
Sí. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, from my head to pelvis, I've got like something in me everywhere. And um, it's like being a prisoner inside your own body. You know, like uh-huh. you're in prison on the inside of you. Like, and then everything else that can make life terrible, I guess, you have also. So do you feel when signals are being sent, they're being sent to different parts of your body and these are sort of pain signals? Do they, you said, you use the word disabled and impaired. Do you feel obstructed then on a day-to-day basis? It's an infinitely running loop. Like, it just constantly spins in circles and it's like receiving data from my body and putting data into my body. And it's through electrical stimulation that it does this, interacting with my, you know, body, flesh, like my my nerve endings. It, it's just constantly raping me on the spinning wheel of hell, just like the the spinning wheel when your phone is trying to load a page. It's the spinning mm-hmm. wheel of hell, but with implants and that cell phone spinning. So the physical sensation is one of intense pain, continuous, or something yeah. like that. Yes, mm-hmm. it's extremely so, unplugged, continuous. Do you okay? So do you feel your body and your mind are in both, uh, and your brain are both being attacked at the same time? Yes, I've got multiple implants that way. Does this stop you from functioning on a daily basis? You know, regular functioning, doing the kinds of things that anybody does. Yes, it, it's like I have to move against. The, the current of the ocean, I guess, I suppose. Would be a way to say it or something. Do you feel you're fighting against something every single day when you wake up in the morning? Yes, being this way is, is um, constantly being violated right on the inside. Are you being physically sort of electrically shocked or electrocuted in some way? That's what I'm trying to explain that the neuromodulation is an electrode stimulation device. Sort of like I see. I see. You might know about like their battery yeah. pulse generator devices like that that okay. latch on part of you idea and pulse electricity in a certain way there. Okay, so you do feel pulses of electricity, you feel some kind of vibration, some kind of stimulation going through your body? It's like the room's constantly spinning, like you're dizzy constantly, like the room is like a, a, a circular spinning thing. It kind of like messes wow. with your feeling, I suppose. I mean, having a computer interface with your head or any other part of you is not a cool way to be. Not at all, but I'm trying to understand what exactly this system, this external computer system is doing, you know, to you, to your brain and to your body. And it sounds like you've reported continuous kind of pulsing, vibrating, stimulation at many different levels, and um, what else? Well, um, I mean, I'm just getting signals sent to things inside me, so... um, they screw me up inside. 
And uh, I guess, you know, like anywhere I go in the world, everyone has to view me as some kind of, you know, crazy person that the government needs to stalk. Like, I mean, the government is a stalker predator that wants to write narratives over people to take people's lives. I mean, there's those kinds of things. I mean, that's how they do these things to people. They they want to have people locked up. You know, like... Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All of that is true. And in fact, many of these government agencies, as I said, they're out of control. They're not really working as our government, you know, they're just working off the rails here as sort of rogue entities of their own, engaging in whatever agendas they've got going. Um, when you see, when you go out in public, etc., do you feel, are your limbs being moved without your volition, for instance? Are your organs being accessed and, you know, causing you to do, engage in actions that you don't will, that it's not something that you are doing voluntarily or volitionally? That's the point of what the technology is developed to do, is to augment the human being's insides mm -hmm. with electrical stimulation to force mm -hmm. the, the body and brain and nervous system to do things that it otherwise would not be doing. That, that's exactly what... Okay, uh, okay. I'm... Yeah, you know, a lot of people have reported this. It's a kind of sort of external um, electroshocking. It can cause convulsions. It can cause seizures. It can cause arms and limbs to sort of jerk suddenly. Um, and when they hit the bladder, you, people are, you know, have induced incontinence, things like that. Um, so people can be uh, forced to cough or sneeze because they've got this energy tech just sort of hitting them in their face or their throat. Uh, forced speech, I mean, there are patterns for this stuff as well, you know, where they lay the energy weapon against your throat, uh, which causes, even if you are asleep, it causes um, words and sounds to come out of your mouth. Are you talking about things like that? I mean, it is kind of like being like Freddy Krueger's puppet, you know, being locked to your death like that, I guess. But, um, I mean, there's all sorts of things that can be done to a person in all kinds of different ways, I guess. But um, for me, it's, it's, I mean, I, I'm not the person that says the directed energy weapon thing a lot like that, but mm -hmm. um, I think that's like old technology that's been around a long time. But um, yeah, I suppose I, I, I'm like being augmented. That's like the whole idea of it. Yeah, I do have problems like that. I don't want to, like, you know, talk about it, like, too much, like, in too many different... No, you don't. I just was trying to get an idea of all of the... Yeah, yeah, you don't need to go into detail. I was trying to get a sense of what, what exactly you're reporting, because, indeed, many other people have reported this. And, you know, I can tell you a lot of people are also reporting things like... Um, sounds and images being flashed into their retinas and into their inner viewing and inner seeing, um, you know, into their brain pretty much, uh, so that they literally see things and they um, are subjected to sounds and subjected to um, voices and conversations inside their head from the perpetrators, you know, sort of just able to transmit the stuff into their brains, for which there's a lot of technology now. Dr. Robert Duncan has actually done a video talking about six or seven different kinds of technologies that put these voices into people's heads. Yeah. There, there's technology linked up to my inside that's being remotely monitored. I don't think like someone is talking into my head with a megaphone, like, you know. Okay. I, I'm not 
like what a lot of those targeted individual calls sound like that I'm sure that you're used to listening to. I've heard uh, a few, I, yeah. I know what, what I've got inside me that's screwing me up inside that because I have like went to the doctor, got imaging, looked in my insides and I mean I know where I'm screwed up inside at and then just like looking at it on the medical images and uh, so that's how I determined what kind of technologies are actually inside me. Um, but yeah, I know there's a lot of people that say that the microwaves are scrambling them up. Um, mm -hmm. For me, like these attacks are internal. I mean, the, the thing penetrating me is definitely like the, the, a signal coming into me um, and I'll, I'll hear it because it, it it's like a tetanitis thing that um, having that broadcast signal go to these devices inside me um, mm -hmm. but you know I don't want to like sit here and, and try to make people think that I have no control over my, my myself, that I'm walking around like that. I don't want people to become afraid of me or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like being slowly fried inside. Mm -hmm. um, detached from, you know, it, you're 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 like de detached mm -hmm. well it's a yeah and did you say there's something violating you yeah from yeah. externally you're yeah absolutely absolutely I, it's a huge I, invasion of privacy you know this is biohacking you're talking about biohacking and neurohacking Nobody has the right to attack to attack another another human body or a human being or an animal body or animal being. But you know now these guys have the technology to do it and they're doing it. So you're right. It's a huge invasion of privacy, a huge violation. No one has the right to do it to another person. I mean, it, it's it's one of those things people don't understand. And the more you try to explain it, the more crazy you're going to be thought of. And That's right, because the existence paradigm is all about behavioral health, you see. So if you do something that sort of steps outside the norms of behavioral health, then the it's a very old paradigm. It's a, it's a very old, um, outdated convention, and it's obsolete, really, in this day of neuroscience and weaponize neuroscience. But um, that is the paradigm that these guys are trying desperately to keep operative. And we are here to break those old obsolete conventions by showing them that this is actually very modern day, very military, weaponized neurotechnology that's being used against people. It sure is all that. Mm -hmm. How long do you has this been going on? And you said you had imaging. What kind of imaging? Do you have x-rays? Do you have MRIs? So you've actually seen some of these body area networks and devices inside your body? Yeah. On these x some hockey pucks, batteries that fit in a circle. And it's like a little figure eight move in and out, in and out, in and out for all your inside. And, you know, just like a phone call on your cell phone, just back and forth instantly, constantly in and out, in and out on a loop, little like metallic looking battery pulse generators that you can see in a medical MRI, on a CT scan. Uh, you know, so you've had CD scans and MRIs? You have this evidence? You have this information? Yeah, of course, like, my my life is always getting robbed and, like, everything that I have is always getting jacked. I can't 
you know, have it. But, um, yeah, I've done all that work. I've been through that. I mean, I didn't just make up everything I said. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I had to, you know, figure out that it was the way that it is that I said that it is. And, uh, I started having imagings done and looking at my own insides and seeing machines like that, battery stimulator machines um, with wires coming out of them, going to my insides. And it it took quite a bit of researching these devices to put names on them, but by going on some of those targeted individual community calls, like I gathered together enough information, like about things like remote neural monitoring and mm-hmm. looking at different kinds of medical implant devices because thing that happens to me is like my my country will push a narrative over me, lock me up, rob me blind for everything I have and do these things to me. I get like forcefully taken, locked up and implanted. I mean my problem is like surgical scars problem, you know this foreign thing is now inside you problem that hurts you and makes you unable to, I mean, you can't do anything with your body or, I mean, with all these things weaved in and out of you on your insides. Um, those battery devices are pretty big. Um, how did you start getting these this imaging done? Did you just go to your regular doctor and, you know, just say you had a pain in this part of your body or whatever and get an x-ray done? Is that how it happened? Or I had a CDC? or whatever. Like, yeah, I told them that I was having the kinds of issues that I was having. Like, you know, the kind of issues like how I have bowel movements or something that these things might be messing me up, you know, doing mm-hmm. things like that to my insides. Um, I, I don't really know where I was going with that. I, um, but when you talked to your doctor, they sort of sent, away, sent you away to get a scan done of some kind, and that's yeah, how you got the evidence. I went to the to the doctor and um, just said, hey, I got this or that problem, exactly, and uh, got the imaging done. They said whatever they said about it, and I looked at the images myself, and there's something violating me in my body, so you just kind of look Mm -hmm. through the imaging and where you know they did that to you at, you look in there and you find it and you just search and search and search until you figure out what it's called and then you can just like watch all the videos and look at all the information for everything that They've been doing neuromodulation technology, you know, Mm -hmm. since the course of my life. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you did not take things for granted. You did a lot of research in order to find out what it was that you were seeing on your scan images. And um, you've understood a little bit about what's going on. Um, And, you know, right now there's a lot of information actually in the public domain currently about wireless body area networks and about things like the Internet of Things, the Internet of Humans, the Internet of Bodies, ways in which these guys are trying to hook people up to computers and to the Internet and whatnot. 
and engage in what they call uh, telehealth or telemedicine from a distance, but it's nothing but biohacking. And um, in all the cases that we are speaking of, non-consensual access. So um, very horrifying story. How, how long has this been happening? Christopher, how long do you want to um, report that this is something you've experienced? Well, it, it happened to me my whole life. It's like it's like a rerun. It's this loop. I, I mean, not just like the implants spinning my insides in circles, but everything that the government does is like a reproduction of everything that the government has done to you before like and it chases you everywhere you go in life and it's just some cop trying to figure out what he needs to do and say to be able to do and say the thing that he needs to be able to do and say do the things that he does to you and says over you just Are you harassed in public by the police? Yeah, everything in my life is like something I'm not allowed to go out and do or be a part of without everyone there thinking I'm a crazy criminal piece of shit that they need to stalk around everywhere. And so you've told me at one point that every time you go out you find police cars following you, etc. Is that still happening? It happens the way it happens. It's like any time you move on the grid or stop moving on the grid and sit down somewhere for like 20 minutes or whatever, if there's a cop in the area or whatever, FBI, dispatch, security dude, whatever it might be besides police, Someone comes in, flashes some kind of badge or some call comes in, you know, it's that I'm a watch listed person, you know, like, and there's this crap story on my life and they want to constantly go around trying to reproduce this crap story. It was never the truth in the first place that just started with my mother, Kathy Search, and it's this narrative, this cycle of theft and violence in my life, you know, making me a homeless, institutionalized person, and um, it, it's just one more time, more again, worse, or else, you know, because they push that story over you and then they say, or else, you know, more again, worse, for longer. And, and everyone just cops out and says the narrative that they produced over themselves because they're afraid of not doing it. Mm. So you're basically talking about not just, you know, um, law enforcement or DHS or FBI stalking you, but you're also talking about community they're, they're stalking, community actors. harassment. They're, they're all actors. you got to be an actor, a psychopath. Mm, right. Lots of crisis actors and lots of surveillance role playing going on. To, to do Certainly things. a lot of smear operations, lies and stories. It's just that I'm stuck in this loop. It's like there's this narrative on my life that they they need to do the new chapter to so they can rob me blind. And what is this up. narrative essentially? That you are a violent individual? That's the storyline? Yeah, exactly. It started with my mother and... Um, she must have pushed that narrative over my father because my father had problems. Like, I, I, I mean, I, I know that he must have had problems. I didn't get to know him, 
or anything, but it's the story that they roll. Yeah, I'm this crazy behavioral problem. Like, it's the same story they push over everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a special story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the threat thing, right? Everybody's labeled a threat, um, potentially violent, potentially criminal, uh, mentally unstable, community risk, needs to be watched and monitored and harassed all the time. Everything right? to justify what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, to be there. Like, you know, you, you get to the place and, and the people there, they... They do like the loss prevention or whatever, the store security team, like, they're there for you to follow you around. Sometimes they even mm -hmm. talk to you, right, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, because somebody comes in and tells them a story, uh, yeah. tells them that there is a potentially violent individual here who needs to be watched. Yeah, they do it everywhere. They do their job, because that's what their job is, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alerted somehow when you get somewhere that you know you're a person that that they need to eyeball and mm -hmm. and yeah you know, worried about yeah it's called manufactured threat um, creation and manufactured targeting manufactured crime um, is what they're doing just so they can continue getting funding for their crime prevention programs and, and, and the story computer that justifies doing that to me is like the story they they always want to reproduce somehow you know like yeah they're always of course follow. yeah they'd like that's a good way of putting it they'd like to reproduce it so they try to harass and provoke in order to create a so repetition the reason to be doing this is that's the story they want to write again. yeah 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 so, wow. And, you know, even uh, whatever it is that's the initiating story or whatever, I mean, in your case, what was it? Was it something that um, really happened or was it something that was manufactured and fabricated from the outset? I've been learning about psychology, like, as best I can. Mm -hmm. And I guess, like, one of the psychological traits of a predator is that they project what it yes. is they their victims on their yeah. and my mother is one of those narrative producing predators for the system she pushes those narratives that take people's lives in the hospital i'm so sorry about that so your mother is still working she's still an employee for the system I see. Those things pushing those narratives the way they push them, those people that do those things. Yeah, yeah. And the entire psychiatry mental health system, my God. <laughs> it's a joke. It is, a, well, it's actually a tragedy because it's destroying lives. But um, it's certainly run by people who are indoctrinated. It all and, um, my mother. And, um, Everything, I mean, she, she did an awesome job building this narrative for the system to be spoken over me. And that's mm. the story that, that they're trying to like find someone to help them produce. Mm. Over now, you mentioned this. I yeah, I, yeah. Thing, you know, when they throw your life away forever, like. They want to say, mm -hmm. you've had this problem that you have over and over again. Yeah, well, that, that, there's a lot going on. And part of it is, you know, a lot of covers are being created by the so-called law enforcement security mechanism in order that um, certain darker agencies can step in and take over and, and victimize people and use them for non-consensual experimentation. That's definitely going on as well. But in your case, um, you know, I wanted to ask you, um, since this has been going on for such a long time, and you mentioned that the system is trying to re 
affix labels to you. Are you in any way connected to the behavioral health system, psychiatry system? Do you have a caseworker, psychologist whom you meet with, therapist? No, I, I had a um, psychologist, Seth Barber, that I spoke to. Um, oh, okay. Anti-psychology, um, anti-establishment. He's an anti-psychiatry psychologist, I guess. Well, sadly, he's passed away now, but um, I knew Seth as well. And, um, you know, I've had him on a few of my shows, and I should actually publish more of his, um, more on him, because he's somebody who stands out. He published a lot of books on the subject of how the psychiatry system is broken, and psychiatry in itself is sort of a failed um, ideology. So I and fully pharma-driven. You know, I, I like to talk to those people and be well-informed about the, the psychiatric system. Good, yeah. My life from. But you're not sort of, you know, you're not hooked into their general system. You're not seeing somebody on a regular basis or anything like that. How do no, you cope yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis? How do you... What what are you doing these days? How do you cope? Um, well, what I'm doing, what what what's being done to me, just kind of like, you know, leaves you kind of incapacitated. I mean, there's not much to do to cope with it that you can do. It's just something violating you inside, being done mm -hmm. to you. Um, what would you like to see happen in the best of worlds? How do you think this can end? I don't think it's going to end. I think that it's going to move forward into the future of all the cyborg, everything that they haven't even thought of, you know, doing the people yet. It's just going to keep moving forward. This isn't going to get any. Well, that's the darker vision, right? Because they are aiming at a cyborgian dystopia here, and uh, they're working hard to word it. To word it. But um... transhumanism is going to move on. We're all going to implant our brains into machines. Well, I think that's the darker vision. I, I actually don't necessarily think that's true, and I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're working hard at it, certainly, and they've already implanted pretty much everybody, you know, with the nanotech. It's probably in everybody's neurosystem, neural systems, etc. But, um, you know, there are ways out of it as well. I mean, for instance, a lot of people use methodologies like meditation and, you know, spiritual practice and prayer and things like that to break out of this hold. I, I, I don't know that it's going to break you out of the hold, but, I mean, I'm all for those things that you just mentioned. Oh, good, good, because I was going to suggest maybe that's something you want to, you know, check out and try for yourself as well, because those may be ways forward, you know, especially things from yoga and stuff, breathing, pranayama, lots of these breathing exercises, they could possibly help. Having something attached to you, like, I mean, it makes a lot of those things hard to, like, really... Yeah, receive. I I understand. I understand it is hard, yes. Yeah, I can. And I understand that it could be much harder than I imagine, but... Um, but things, I mean, those are good things, and they do help people, so mm -hmm. by all means, like, you can be involved in those kind of activities. Yeah. I wish I was going to like, you know, kundalini yoga or something. Mm -hmm. What's stopping you? I mean, there might be some yoga places near where you are, right? Could you sign up for a yoga class? What's stopping me is just, um, I guess, the, the money and transportation to go do all those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay, so it's an issue of money, etc. Wow, yeah, so I'm not going to go like just down the the block where the grocery store is at and do something like a Kundalini yoga meditation. Mhm. Mm yes, and there's also lots of stuff online these days as well on YouTube and stuff. You know, lots of yoga teachers showing different kinds of practice online so that might be a possibility as well but uh, certainly going to a class would be much more exciting right um i'm trying to find out if there are if there are ways that you are looking ahead to seeing a future that's you know a little bit better than what it is currently and you know any ideas you have any thoughts you have on making well, this madness super, stop super rich elite they'll, they'll get to go live on Mars or something and, um, and then, you know, whoever's left will, will be here with uh, a computer attached to their head. Mm -hmm. Are you in touch with anybody else who's reporting something similar to you? I mean, I, I've uh, talked to like other people online or I've even called those conference calls and talked to people on there. Terrific. Yeah, because that might help, right? I suppose having someone to talk to might mm -hmm. always help. You know? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what would you like to say to others, Chris, who might be experiencing and reporting some of the similar kinds of things that you are reporting? But what I like, well, I mean, it, it just comes down to figuring out exactly what it is that they're doing to you. Know what I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I suppose there are people that, that say that the government shoots them with ray guns or whatever. Like, I don't know. Uh, I suppose they're probably doing that to someone somewhere. Uh, You're doing it to a lot of people, trust me. I know all about it. it, it it's just a matter of figuring out what, what it is that, that's being done to you and right. having mm -hmm. the terminology to be able to say it. And Correct, yes. Yeah. is a crazy lunatic on a mm -hmm. crazy rant about crazy things. That is great advice because indeed researching to find the correct terminology and to recognize that indeed there is a lot of information out there but in the public domain and from declassified documents showing and proving the, not just the existence of these weapons but the fine-tuning development and sophistication of these weapons um, that are Damn. indeed being used. Um, just keep researching things like biomedical implants and I mean you can watch like those TED talks um, or mm -hmm. like Ivy League college university lectures mm -hmm. and that's how like I learned a lot about what they're doing to people you know it's, it's everything that they're talking about at Harvard about doing to people in the future century to come is like what's being done to people making them crazy and because they're doing different things to people in different ways it's mm -hmm. just you really got to figure out what they put inside you wear and what it is they're doing to you mm -hmm. What would you like to say if you had a chance? In fact, I think this is the moment. I'm sure they're listening with bated breath over here to our conversation. But what would you like to say to these people who are behaving so inhumanely, so unethically, so amorally and immorally by biohacking and neurohacking into people just because they have um, these grandiose dreams and delusions of absolute power over over everybody, over humans? Psychopaths that serve the military, medical, pharmaceutical, industrial complex, whatever their, you know, particular yeah. 
you know, spoke on the wheel is that mm -hmm. spins the wheel around. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of those, yeah? Lots of parts of those wheels here yeah, spinning. I mean, it's, it's simple with those people. It's a psychological trait of a psychopath. It, if it's good for that person, then they'll do it. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's like taking kids from their families to give them to, you know, a sexual predator that yeah. wants to make them sexual and, like, have them be homeless and locked up in prison and shit, like... Um, I mean, they'll do it because at the end of the day, they go home to their families and everyone calls them a hero do-gooder and mm -hmm. anyone <laughs> that, then uh, they get called insane. They get the labels and the narratives of being a mental Ill criminal all over them. So, um, I mean... Those people are predators, you know, they're predators the way they are because they want to feel powerful and mm -hmm. they, 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 they feel a rush doing, you know, those things and because they're predators, those things aren't being done to them because they're the ones doing them. Like, I just think of. And it's always everyone else's fault. You know, it's never a problem with those people. Uh, well, they're occupying situations and positions of power, which they're misusing and abusing with great ferocity over here. And, you know, I think calling them psychopaths and predators is certainly not out of place and perfectly apt and apposite. Is there anything that you could say to them? Is there any way you think that you could actually reach them, you know, to speak to their conscience? in their consciousness, if they have any. Like, that's why I was saying that. Uh, I mean, life feeds on life. I, I'm sure that they're, they're content with being the people that they are. They, they made the decision that that was the best thing for them to be. That was what profits them. And um, they don't, don't have to care about anything else you know like mm -hmm. what people care about in life is like who they're going on a date with what they're having for dinner and, and being safe and secure somewhere not having any problems and then unless something messes up their life that's, mm -hmm. that's all they're thinking care about is is you know just living life fully um, so that's why the people that do these things that we're talking about, they can count on that, that, that no one's going to like stick their neck out or care. So they can do these things like this, this comfort and, um, they, they, they don't have the fear of a consequence. Because they're, you know, the powers that be employed for the system. And what is there to tell them? They, they chose that. They were intelligent. All their decisions to seek to be those kinds of people in life. They, they just are what they are. And I mean, me and what army is going to change them or do anything to stop them and what they mm -hmm. do set over for everyone to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's very brilliantly elucidated about uh, them operating without fear of consequence, which is indeed how they have been operating. And I think you're talking about the general run of uh, society kind of just putting their heads down and ignoring what's happening next yeah. door and just doing what, you know, not is, it's not their business and therefore they're focusing on their own lives, etc., and trying to ignore what's happening next door. But... It's what's good for them, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and people are very afraid to. I mean, people are operating out of fear because they've been given to understand these agencies are very powerful. And, uh, you know, the men in black, etc., you never cross them. You you um, just keep going and just put up with everything. But, um, you know, I think um, the story that you are relaying here tonight and um, the stories that many people have relayed all around the world um, should give all of us pause as a society and, you know, help us to address these people and say this is absolutely unacceptable. This is absolutely atrocious and it needs to be stopped immediately, you know. And, um, uh, and the people crime, don't control everyone. I mean, anybody with a career, a family, a life that they wish to continue leading in the United States is under the control of the system doing the same. So, I mean, they can bend anyone to their, their will. Yeah, they, they insinuate themselves into families, they infiltrate and they scare people and families to turn against family members. Um, really about that, power and what power does to those who are powerless. And might makes right and uh, the dead or wrong, guilty, and to blame, and that's just the way it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the dark side of looking at it, but indeed that is what's been happening. This is, you know, the untrammeled abuse of power, the misuse of power, and, um, you know, a complete let go of morality, morals, ethics, moral compass, humanity, humaneness, etc., and um, therefore, it's important that these stories be told. So, Christopher, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show tonight and sharing with everybody your story and your experience. I would, you know, counsel and caution you to, to always remain positive, optimistic, and to continue living your life as best you can and always look for um, everything positive that you can do for yourself and to improve your own life. Okay. and. I'll, I'll do the best I can, whatever that is. Brilliant, brilliant. And remember that when you do the best and when you speak out as you've spoken now, other people are going to hear your story and be on your side. You know, and other people, hopefully, listening to this conversation tonight, will take up your fight for you, you know, from whatever positions of power that they I have. I need a lawyer to take my, my fight up for me. So if anyone wanted to, like, help me, Financially, I, I'd like to buy a lawyer, a private investigator to tell me about the family I was taken from so I could have my life be made a victim like this. Um, I mean, what I really need is people in my court that are going to be supportive of me and my struggle and fighting the system is a difficult thing to fight because every time they push a narrative over you, you're locked up, you're robbed blind, you're made homeless, and anything that you might have in the bank goes to fighting for a case. Mm -hmm. and, um, so I need like a lawyer that I could like have on the payroll is basically what being a targeted individual is like. Um, I need, like, a psychologist just to, like, defend me, you know, so I can try to stay healthy and normal and not be crazy, you know, mm -hmm. being killed so in jail or the hospital or wherever, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So if anyone wanted to help me financially, that, that would be helpful. Brilliant. Yeah, do you have, can people send you money by, I mean, through PayPal or something? Yeah, I could, you know, put like a, a, a cash app link or something maybe. Terrific. Yeah, please do. Set it up and send me the link. I'd be happy to post it below the video. And, you know, I'd like to, I think that's a great call for help that you just made. And, you know, I would also caution everybody who's listening to this, if you are in a position of uh, power, authority or whatever, whichever sphere, whichever field of expertise you are in, you know, listen to Chris's story, listen to other stories like Chris's and take some action to make this you know, situation change. Seeing the change that you want to see in the world 
And I, I do want to, like, facilitate change. So I just need, like, that power and resources, financial ability to facilitate changes. There are things that I'd like to be doing with my life. But I'm just mm -hmm. buried so much by, you know, just narratives yeah. Yeah. about me that want to be recreated and replayed everywhere I go in life constantly by the system. Mm -hmm. So I, I need like an army like that will stand up for me because when you're going to court, it's like all these pointed fingers pointed at you and you need to have people on your side saying that, no, that isn't right. That isn't so, um, it's like, yeah, I got cases. I, I need, I need to like clean my life up. So hopefully it could have some opportunity to go forward in any direction. Like, please get a shovel, help me unbury myself. And, um, you know, hopefully some part of my life could be salvageable for something. Absolutely. All parts of your life and hopefully, you know, your entire life. But I was also going to say it's not just a matter of court cases, but it's a matter of, you know, your own self. I would suggest you look into the American State Assembly movement and become um, an American, which is restoring your birthright status as an American. Um, because that's been taken away from everybody. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but, um, you know, that is a way in which... ...that I was taken from, so I could be made some weirdo person that everyone looks at like a freak. Well, no, this really has to do with the fact that everybody in this country, you know, who's actually an American by birthright, has been defrauded oh. of their birthright status and freedoms and been told they are, they are U.S. citizens under the U.S. Citizen Inc. Corporation. And, um, you know, that's a form of slavery and enslavement that has led, I think, also to the situation where people have been wrongfully targeted and victimized in this fashion. It's made it easier for them to uh, take over people's lives. So I think breaking out of that system is important. Like getting the uh, descendancy-based citizenship in Italy, that would be something I need another lawyer for. I would really mm -hmm. like to, you know, kind of get out of the country that, that, that killed me, that, that hates my Italian people. If so I it's a call out to the Italian community as well, right? Because you're Italian, right? Maybe they want to just like put me on a boat back to Italy or something. I don't know. Maybe so perhaps somebody back. watching, perhaps somebody watching has you know connections with the Italian community and can step forward to give Christopher a helping hand over here, and you know help uh, lead him forward to some greater freedom so any last words christopher we probably should close for this evening but um you i think you've given everybody a bit of guidance over here in terms of how they can help you and please do give me the link to whatever you set up fundraising or cash app or whatever and i will post the link and um you know I, I echo your call that people step forward to help provide community support um, any kind of psychological counseling, legal counseling that they can possibly give you, and hopefully people from your community, from the Italian world in America steps forward as well. Wouldn't that be wonderful? If there were more people in the world that, you know, were, were more willing to do that and not just um, help the government push their narrative that everyone's a crazy criminal that just needs destroyed by health care. Mm -hmm. Quote unquote healthcare, right? <laughs> yeah. That the everyone is just the problem and that the government's not doing anything messed up that they shouldn't be doing at all ever. Um I mean, people just aren't that willing to go out of their way to 
to like help these people. And there's a lot, right? There's a lot of exceptional people in the world, though, and we are uh, trying to call out to those people, the very That's special, true. unique people, exceptional people who do That's step true. out of their own lives and help others, right? More than anything, is is that there's someone there to stand in the way of these things being done. And yeah, yeah. I wish there were more people that were legitimate about doing that, and I wish I could do that. But I'm just sort of helpless, and I need some empowerment, and I need the, the funds to, to do those things. Yes, yes, absolutely. But and frankly... You know, I need to be able to do things for myself so I can be at a level that, you know, I can be someone who gives back to, to you know, others. Brilliant. Like, Brilliant. I'm sure wonderful things await you in your future, Christopher, and hopefully this will be the start of it, and hopefully people listening will make a difference over here, because you are speaking as somebody who is inside the being victimized camp, and you are speaking out and trying to alert um, humanity, really, all of us in our society, to wake up, recognize what is going on, um, and act to do something, especially, this is a call out especially to every single one of these agencies that's watching us tonight, every single police, law enforcement, security agency, every single um, national security agency and black operation you know, classified, compartmentalized group that's operating inside the U.S. military and so forth. Um, it is time to to stop attacking people and it is time to step forward to halt all atrocities that are being conducted in the name of national security and in the name of classified operations and uh, break out of those compartments and help the people who are reporting such extreme America. abuse. Sorry? To give everyone a fair shot. Give everybody a fair shot, exactly. So on that note, um, Christopher, thank you so much again. Stuff has to stop. It has to stop. This has to stop. Yes. Thank you again for speaking out. I know it takes courage and it takes, um, you know, a lot of gumption and a lot of energy to tell your story. Um, but I thank you for telling your story. It it will help you and it will help others. So on that Hello. note. Yes. Uh, I hope so. I, I truly hope that it accomplishes all that what you just said. I hope so too. I do things completely in hope and optimism and staying on the positive side and looking at the positive side of things and, and hoping that these conversations and this information, this energy that's being sent out into the world, you know, will find a receiving space and um, things will change. And the lives of those uh, who are being destroyed by the brutalities and atrocities of the system will be redeemed, you know, by the intervention and humanitarian actions of people. Simply acting from the heart and responding as real living human beings rather than automatons and people bound to a job and whatnot. Sorry? Like vicious carnivorous beasts not mm -hmm. responding like that. Not responding like that, exactly. Responding like the opposite of that. So, <laughs> one can only I'm hope, right? There and cut your own pound of flesh, you know, worried about your own situation, but like actually being the person that stands in the way of someone who's helpless. You know, That's again. brilliantly put, you know, being the person who stands in the way of somebody who's helpless and who's being, being made helpless, who's being made into a victim, somebody who's got a lot to give, somebody with great power as a person who needs to be permitted to just live his life um, as his creator, you know, wanted him to do. So, you know, this is a call out to everybody. So on that note, um, you know, I wish you a very good night, Christopher. I thank everybody for watching, and um, hopefully the next time we see you, you will have good news to report.
or maybe I'll have good news to report um, on the, these entire programs which need shutting down now, not tomorrow, not you know two years from now, but now immediately. So on that note, thanks everyone. Have a great night. Bye. And we'll speak again soon. Bye for now.